An end of an era at the Pentagon. We're going to take a look at the legacy of Robert Gates. Also fast and furious, this wildfire brings new concern this morning about nuclear fallout from a weapons lab in the fire's path. And summer has arrived and so have those scorching temperatures. So how do you get your daily activity in without overheating? I'm Michelle Velez with the folks from Boot Camp Las Vegas and we've got some good tips for you coming up. either we certainly right? don't well and today we're enjoying a kind of a nice respite because yes. no triple digits on the right. board today but of course we know we're in for it for the rest of the season with the triple digits here this summer well this sunday is going to be 111 well, out there, there. so <laughs> how do you make sure you can exercise and uh, not get into a dangerous situation with the heat at the same time for those answers we go to michelle velez you are at boot camp where you have been many times before on the west side of the valley i guess one way to avoid the heat of the day is work out at 5 39 in the morning <laughs> <laughs> that is one way and you know Dana and Kim one of the benefits of summertime is extra daylight which brings out more people but as you mentioned the downside to that for folks here in the desert scorching temperatures 111 and plus so what do you do when you want to be out and be active whether you're doing a strenuous workout like this or whether you're just out and about with the family well we're here with our fitness guru Julie from boot camp Las, uh, Las Vegas and we're gonna talk about that so you and I were chatting yesterday about this most important thing bar none, hydrating. Yes, absolutely, and it's not just bringing out water while you're gonna go do your exercise or have your picnic in the park. It's about hydrating the day, two days before you decide to go out in the high temperatures. Of course, we always say it's not hot, it's all in your head, but seriously, it is hot out here and you have to be hydrated. Okay, so even if you're going through your work day and you're not even doing any exercise, a lot of people are already dehydrated. I mean, we have to drink more water throughout the day just to get through a normal day. So would you recommend people coming out in these kind of temperatures to work out? I mean, can you do that? Yes, absolutely. But the trick is you have to make sure that, I mean, you, you don't, you have to hydrate before you're thirsty. Once you're thirsty, it's definitely too late. But coming out here, it's just simply a matter of keeping your body temperature down. So if that means drinking a ton of water before you go out and during, it can also mean like keeping yourself wet. When we come out here for our 930 classes, our 6 p.m. classes, we get everybody soaking wet head to toe. We start them doing push-ups in the sprinklers, in the fountains. And then when you're wet and you're out here exercising, you actually don't feel the cold. Because one of the things that you do when someone is overheated is you put cold water on them. Well, why not put cold water on them before you have to actually even get out in the sun? Yeah, to start. Okay, so coming up in our next hour, we're going to talk about some of the um, signs of heat stroke and um, uh, overheating and heat exhaustion. And we're going to talk about the difference because some are more dangerous than others. So we're going to touch on that because that's really important. And Dana and Kim, something that you really have to keep also in mind is pay attention to the time of days and make sure that you also are fueled. Make sure that you eat because if you're already dehydrated and then you don't have any food, you have a bad combination for, for, for disaster, especially if you're not used to being out in this heat. And also, Michelle, you're a bit of an expert yourself. You are a certified rumba instructor. Hello. That's done indoors. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Do, She's a fitness expert. I am. I do. I, I'm a Zumba instructor, um, but that's inside in the air conditioning. So there's a lot of things that I can even learn. And whether you're outside or inside, in this heat, it still doesn't matter because you're already dehydrated just because of how hot it is. So we're going to talk more about that coming up in our next hour. We'll see you again yeah. then. And, and this is how cool Michelle is. She didn't even correct right. me. I called it rumba. It's Zumba. Well, yeah, rumba's <laughs> a dance. I don't I have no idea what Zumba is, but rumba's a dance. I Okay. Well, yeah. that, that would get you to lose a few calories, too. It would. Turn off a few calories. No question. Okay, time check. 542. And working out in 110 degrees, it can be done if you're smart about it. Coming up, I'm Michelle Velez. We are live with Boot Camp Las Vegas, and we're going to give you some tips on how to be active outside without overheating. Straight ahead. I was Looking out beneath the hot summer sun, you can do it. They are. We'll tell you how to do this without getting heat illnesses. I'm Michelle Velez with all of that information straight ahead. From News 3, this is Wake Up with the Wagners with Dana and Kim Wagner, live from the KSNB studios in Las Vegas. Oh. Live from the KSNV studios in Las Vegas.
Oh, that just makes me tired looking at him out there uh, working I was, out. I was just going to say, anyone feel like a slacker that we're watching people do <laughs> sit-ups as we're doing whatever we're doing? Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome in on this Thursday. We appreciate you waking up early with us. Our humidity at 27%. Nice day to be outside. A light breeze, a high of 95 degrees. It is now 635, and if you are looking for an excuse not to work out, you can certainly say it's just too hot. Right. This Sunday is going to be 111 degrees. Who wants to be outside in that? But yeah. there are ways to get in your workouts without being in danger of overheating. News 3's Michelle Velez joins us this morning. From the west side of the valley, you are at boot camp. Mm -hmm. Boot Camp Las Vegas, and we always come back to them because they know everything there is to know about fitness. And you know, there are people who will go out in that 111 degree temperature. A lot of people like myself hate running on treadmills and will find a way to run outside. So the question is, how do you exercise or just do anything out in that kind of heat without overheating? Julie Johnston, the founder and owner of Boot Camp Las Vegas. So we were talking about water, staying hydrated, and that is to prevent heat illnesses. Talk about the two main types what the difference is. Heat exhaustion is basically when you start to feel dizzy, faint, a little bit nauseous, um, and then heat stroke is actually when you start to feel disoriented. That's when you need to call 911. When you are vomiting uncontrollably and your core temperature rises to about 104, call 911 immediately. But for heat exhaustion, you just want to keep them cool, dump water on them, get them to a shady spot, and make sure that they're hydrating. That's also the way that you prevent heat exhaustion. So before you go out and work out, make sure that you're drinking as much as you can. Before your workout, dump water all over yourself and make sure that you do as much of it in the shade as you can. Okay, so we're looking at your boot campers right now doing their thing. It is not that hot out yet today, but we are going to be hitting those temperatures, and at this time of day, it's really hot. Real quick, is it okay to go out in this temperature as long as you're safe about it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, as long as you are preventing heat exhaustion by making sure that you're hydrated, making sure that you're wet, and keeping... I, I wear a hat and make sure that my face is shielded from the sun as well. But yeah, if you do it right, if you're smart about it, you can act, absolutely come out here and exercise. And the other thing, people like to go out just to, let's say, out on the boat for 4th of July or out at a baseball game and they drink alcohol. What is your thoughts on that? You are far more likely to get heat exhaustion or heat stroke going out on a boat and drinking alcohol all day than you are coming out here and exercising with us. Okay, there you have it. So if you'd like to have a beer or something like that out in this kind of temperature, not really a good idea. And Dana and Kim, this is an example of how much water you should be drinking. This is 50, what is this, 50 ounces? 50 ounces. Julie says two of these a day any day of the year, you probably should be drinking more than that if you're going to be out in 111 degrees. Yeah, that's a good idea for sure. And I've seen a lot of people drink it on the golf course when it's 113 uh -huh. degrees outside. That is also not a good idea. Michelle Velez, thank you for that. And we do, as humans, adapt to this warmer weather as we get into summer. It takes us a couple of weeks, though, to get used to it. And today, only 95, so not a real big risk of heat exhaustion today. But temperatures bump up into the weekend. And I think.